Hello, welcome back to the Obliterate the Globe project. I'm John Baldisberger, the kaiju poet, and today I am going to read a piece that I wrote for Mira Lazaro Eckel. Uh, she requested that I focus on, there's the camera, uh, that I focus on Queens, New York, specifically Rockaway Beach. Um, she also stipulated that the kaiju had to be a flying squirrel that breathed fire. So, uh, without any further information, here we go. They were doing something fucked up over in Breezy Point. Not just fucked up, but unnatural. In a way that would have disappointed God, if any God existed that gave two shits about us. Now, most people think of Rockaway as a getaway. A place you go, and you eat your little hot dogs, you take some pictures of the beach, and then you go back to the city and leave it all behind. But it's more than that, right? It is. Rockaway is a place where real people live, where we grow up and feel, well, maybe not safe, but we feel at home. It never felt real good seeing all those tourists, like the natives were just some sort of exhibit at the zoo or fair. My grandfather told me it was always like that. Back when he was a kid, people would just come to gawk at all the Irish. They called it the Irish Riviera. Just because they, they did, don't make it right. That's beside the point. I say all this to say that when it first happened, probably nobody gave a shit, because people don't believe that people actually live here in Rockaway. We started hearing it at night, like someone had cranked up Jurassic Park to full blast, a loud chirping that rose in a roar that didn't sound quite right. I heard a lot of people talking about aliens back then. You know, you know the kind. As soon as they hear anything they aren't familiar with, they go running their mouths with dumbass conspiracy theories. Though those of us who weren't shit for brains knew the truth. The government was doing something they shouldn't be doing. Something dark, dangerous... I was explaining all this to my friend Toby when it happened. Now, most people think that it escaped, but personally, I think it was just a test run. It happened on Saturday, when Rockaway Beach was at its busiest. How can anyone tell me that was a coincidence? Tourists were choking the streets on that hot day, adding their own stink and grime to an already stench-filled stretch of Oceanside City. It came bounding out of Breezy Point Park gloping a few steps for leaping and catching the wind in a horrible fuzzy in those horrible fuzzy stretches of extra skin that it had. Have you ever seen a sugar glider? Do you know how cute their little black eyes are? A lot less fucking cute when they're the size of manhole covers. It was as black as night and with stripes of gray running down its body like racing stripes. It would glide for a few hundred yards before tucking its body to land in an earth-shuddering thud before gloping and leaping again. No one could claim it wasn't graceful. As terrifying as that was, it wasn't until it reached Rockaway Beach that true terror hit. That fucking thing, that sugar glided get in, landed against the building and toppled it like it was nothing. The whole time it rode the bank down to the ground, its massive black eyes seemed to sparkle with some alien joy. It opened its horrendous mouth and chittered, squeaked, and then roared up at the sky, a bizarre noise to come out of such a fuzzy little creature. And then it hiccuped, blasting a gout of flame at least ten meters into the air. I had been in that bank minutes before. I could have been in there, like the dozens of people who were crushed to death right in a moment. It clambered for a grip for a second before leaping to the next building, hiccuping and belching flame the entire time. That's... That's when I got hit. When the world exploded into fire and heat and death, I heard... I heard my skin popping. I felt it crisping up like pork cracklings you get at a fair. I found out later that it wasn't breathing fire, but spitting some sort of napalm-like phlegm at everything. I don't remember much after that. The screams sort of faded into the sound of sizzling flesh, but, uh, of course I saw it all on the news when I woke up in the hospital. The sugar glide apocalypse didn't end when the giant furry asshole belched up Good Morning Vietnam all over me. Nah. Instead, it went on to continue its destructive spree, spin-kicking cars and trucks through storefronts, tossing people into the ocean like a spoiled child that had enough of its toys. It climbed to one of the Dayton Tower buildings to get a look around before making a beeline for the mainland. Coverage is spotty from there until it hit JFK. Holy shit! I had never seen so much death in one place in all my life. 
We're talking about near complete destruction of JFK Airport. Hundreds of civilians. The military met it there, but I guess they hadn't been trained on how to deal with a giant fire breathing death squirrel. From what I can tell, though, the people of Queens came through. They met that bastard with enough privately held firepower to truly fuck up its day. Of course, I'm sure the army men did something to soften it up, but you know what they say, never fuck with the New Yorker. Now everyone is patting themselves on the back all proud and shit, but let me ask you something. Those government boys cooked up this motherfucker. How long do you think it's going to be before the next one gets out? So, that was uh, for Mira Lazaro Eckel. Thank you, Mira. Uh, I hope you enjoyed that, and if you would like me to destroy the city, landmark, person, team, business, whatever of your choice, go to www.kaijupoet.com, click on the OTG Project tab, and you can commission me there. Thanks everyone, until next time, stay safe, but stay scared.